everybody, it's Karen. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I know it's been a long time. Um, I do apologize. It's been a busy summer here and I just haven't gotten around to, to doing a video. Uh, and this video is actually going to be a little bit different. I wanted to do one on ways to use pattern paper. I have got a huge stash of pattern paper that just kind of sits in my craft room. And I, I just reorganized my craft room this summer. Um, and I took so many bags of craft supplies to the Goodwill store. <laughs> and I felt terrible about that, actually. And some of it was pattern paper. And it's beautiful pattern paper. And I just hadn't been using it. And I know I'm not alone in this. And so I just thought... I wanted to organize my mind around different ways to use pattern paper so that maybe I would pull it out a bit more frequently and use it. Um, the other thing that happened is I joined the Craft Consortium design team and so the papers I'm showing you here are all from Craft Consortium and they are beautiful, beautiful papers and so I want to get better at using the pattern paper. If you want some true inspiration, <laughs> I would say go to the Craft Consortium network page on Facebook because my fellow team members are amazing at using pattern paper. I am a card maker so for me this video is about how to use pattern paper and cards but those team members make some beautiful projects so I highly recommend you go there. It's the Craft Consortium Network on Facebook. So some of the papers the pattern papers are very busy papers. They have a lot of pattern in. They've got very high contrast in the colors. And those are the papers that I personally find the hardest to use. Uh, the, the, the papers that have more harmonious colors or maybe a larger design or pattern on them, I do find those much easier to use. Then there are the, the papers that are very thematic. So here, this paper that I'm showing you, that is definitely a Halloween paper. The colors are Halloween-ish. It's very high contrast. It's a smaller pattern. And if you contrast that with this other watercolor paper, you're gonna see that it's, the watercolor paper is more harmonious. There's not a lot of other competing factors. It's different colors really in that pattern. And then also in this book, uh, also from Cap Craft Consortium, you can see that those patterns don't have as much contrast in them. They're more um, analogous colors, I would say. So those ones, personally, I find easier, and I don't tend to use these high contrast papers. So in most of the examples I'm going to show you, my work, it's usually the more harmonious papers, the ones I personally find a little easier to use. But that's not to say that there's anything wrong in the higher contrast papers. I think that for me, I would personally put them uh, at the back of a card and have more plain or solid papers covering them so that only a small amount of them would peek out. And I do think that some people are very good at using a lot of pattern, both in their clothing and home decor, and others, well, we just aren't. <laughs> so hey, let's have a look at some ideas for how to use pattern paper. So I think it's rather obvious that you could use it as a background paper, uh, but I think there are different ways of adding it into a background. In this example, I have used a striped paper for the ocean and then a more beigey colored, um, more uniform paper to use for the sandy beach. Um, in this example, it's a very um, busy patterned paper, I would say. And I've broken that up a little bit by adding in a die cut frame and I've just placed that over top of the pattern paper. And I think that the white could easily have been a red or a navy blue perhaps and it would have given your eye a place to rest. Uh, in this example, the whole background is the pattern paper, but I have again broken that up with the use of white and I've just added a second frame and it just sort of makes that uh, background a smaller part of the card, I think. Uh, I think you could also use vellum or a, you know, a shaped die to, to do the same thing. In this case, uh, the background is behind that sort of woven, um, it's a paper rose die, and it just sort of gave it a little bit more of a break. 
Here again, another very busy pattern paper, which I've die cut with a penny black border die and contrasted that again with the white. I seem to like the white. <laughs> I've just realized when I'm doing this, but that's another example for you. And here again, that's another, it's a different pattern paper from that Midnight Flight, but I've only cut a small amount of it to use as the background. And sometimes I think that's all you need. You still get the effect of a whole lot of background there without it being overwhelming. Now this is a themed pattern paper. It's from the Made by Elves. And so I have used one entire piece of that to create this outside part of a, its theater fold card. So when you open it, it's the inside of the workshop or the wrapping station rather. And so the themed pa paper is the outside and I've coordinated it with that frame that goes around. Um, and so that was another way to use the entire already patterned paper and boy did that make that easy to do so maybe look at things like that a different fold card fold as a way of using different types of pattern papers so there's a few examples where all of these papers have been used as a background in one way shape or form or another so the second technique I've got here is to die cut the pattern paper with a frame die or a background die um, when you, when you cut the pattern paper, it can break up the pattern a little bit. You've got a chance to add in, you can swap out the shapes that you've got. You can switch the frame layer. Um, so it just helps to change up the pattern, I, I guess I'd want to say. Um, and in this example that I'm doing, obviously I've got that die and I've, I've cut the pattern paper here. I've put some press and seal on the back just to keep the pieces in place. And I've also die cut the same frame, frame die from that holographic cardstock. So the pattern paper that I'm using here is a fairly simple pattern, as all my patterns seem to be, guys. Sorry. But it just gives you the chance then, if it is a fairly simple pattern, then you can add in foils or metallics and that will help with that with breaking everything up and adding a bit more interest to it so as you can see there i'm using both the positives and the negatives here i have a piece of uh, die cut and bond that i've adhered to a card front and i'm just going to put the frame piece down on it i think that's the positive piece uh, and it will stick you could use anything. I've used die cut and bond because I have it, but an adhesive sheet, uh, uh, stick it, I think is another one you could use. Whatever you've got uh, that will hold everything in place, it's just a lot easier when you're p paper piecing back in this many pieces. So that's exactly what I'm doing there. I'm just putting the little pieces back in place and I've ended up with two backgrounds now. One's a positive and the other is a negative. So to turn those into cards, I've created this one where I split that one piece in half. I've still got a little bit left over for another card. And I've just put it on the sides of this card and it is just one of these cards that folds out. Um, and I've put little strips along the side just to help break that pattern and go into the white. And then with the other piece, I've created the shaker card now behind the shaker window I used some vellum and I felt like that helped break up that pattern because that holographic cardstock is pretty bright. So the third technique is to cut your pattern paper into strips. So here I've also got another piece of card that I've put some double-sided adhesive on and I'm doing what is called a grouting technique and so what you do is you put your strips down but leave that little gap there between them. Um, and I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring or anything, but you just want a slight gap because we're gonna fill that with foil afterwards. So then just trim everything off. And that adhesive is showing through between the little strips of cardstock. So when you go to put this foil down, it will stick to that tiny little bit of adhesive. And it just gives it a nice break. It gives you a little bit of shiny gold in your, in between your pattern papers. So I'm brushing that in. You could use your finger 
whatever you've got but just you want to get it into all those little um, creases between the pattern paper and really make sure it's stuck down it's a bit messy guys <laughs> so just brush it in move it around make sure it's filled and then at the end use your bone folder to really press that down just to make sure it's um, adhered to that that die cut and bond at the back and that's a little Swiffer cloth to, cloth to clean it all up. And there you go. So you can see that little bit of shine. Now, this is exactly the same technique. I've done exactly that, but instead of cutting straight strips, I cut more triangular strips, and then you can make that sort of half fan type of um, piece. That, and, and on the bottom one, I've just alternated how they were up and down. And here with this one, I have got, this is a die from Paper Rose, and it is actually a weaving die. So I've just cut strips that are the width of the little uh, die, and you glue them in. It's super easy. So here are the cards that I've made. This is the a little bear from uh, Colorado Craft Company. And as you can see, I've just put little strips on the bottom and the top. And I made a little gold, a thin line of gold to go along at the edge of each. And I've got more left over. <laughs> Here I've just done paper weaving on the bottom, a very loose sort of basket weave. I actually use pattern paper for the gnome. That's a gnome from Simon Says Stamp. But that's another fun way to add a little bit of uh, interest. So there you go. A few more ideas for you on, on that. So the next technique is, of course, to die cut shapes, words, pop-up boxes, whatever you've got. Um, I don't actually use this happy. Uh, I've still got to make a card with that, but I'm sure you guys know about doing that. Uh, here I am just using three, actually, pattern papers to uh, make this one heart. And I'm just piecing them together. I normally, I would not put two pattern pieces of paper together so I was trying to push myself to really use a bit more pattern so on the sides of this heart I've used uh, two different kinds of pattern paper and just glued them in place and I made two of those I was thinking I was going to put two hearts together on my card but in the end I did not I did the one and I've just made it um, I don't know an anniversary card or a wedding card an engagement card, whatever it could be. Now, a pop-up box is another great way to use pattern paper. And here, I've actually used three types of pattern paper on this one. Um, so think of that when you are, you know, wondering what to do with your pattern paper. There's so many ways on a pop-up box that you can use pattern paper, especially if they have the flaps, you know, or on the sides of the box and the back. Now, the next way to use pattern paper is to stamp or emboss on it. Now, you can see I'm using this same paper again, you guys. I'm really not the best at using pattern paper, but I do like this piece of pattern paper. So I am stamping and embossing some leaves on it, just down on the bottom, I'm white heat setting them. And all I did is I added a sentiment strip on pattern paper. And I've added that little butterfly that was from a laminated um, folder that I had made. So it was a very quick and simple card to put together. Okay, so the next technique is to stencil over your pattern paper. And you can use anything, obviously. Any pastes, um, metallic pastes, glitter pastes, uh, distress pastes. Uh, and for this example, I'm using a Simon Says Stamp, um, I think that's called the Cosmo Stencil. And this is some Ultra Sparkle Paste from Creative Expressions, which I love. It's a bit like the Nouveau Paste, but it's more, um, Nouveau Paste has more golden uh, tone to it. And this is more almost holographic, you know, a real sparkle. So when you pull it off, you can see the actual sparkle there, which I love. I thought that was very pretty. And then another example I had was I used a distress texture paste or ranger texture paste and it's a transparent gloss. So I haven't made this one into a card. I am yet I have yet to do that. 
but you can see that shine there. It's quite clear when it dries, and I just thought that would be kind of a fun one to do. So here's the card that I made with that first example. Pretty simple, I just added some white die cut flowers with a little bead in the center. And now this card is also stenciled. I used a penny black stencil and the Nouveau paste on this one. Um, and so it is a bit more golden in real life, you can see that. Okay, so the next technique is to add glitter or beads or whatever else you've got. And so here I've got a little piece of pattern paper and I'm applying some an adhesive sheet over the top side of it, pressing it down, and then I'm going to die cut it. Now these are uh, paper rose poncetta flowers, I believe they were. And I'm peeling off the backing paper, so now the sticky side is up on the top. And I'm just going to apply this glitter over the top of them. And then you need to press this down. That glitter is from Cosmic Shimmer. It's a very pretty glitter. It's very, uh, just a nice icy color. It's not got any sparkle, uh, I don't know, holographic sparkle in it. It's just a nice sparkle. So there you see it. You can see the pattern through that. And then that particular die has the outline. So I cut that out of gold foil. And those are the final poncettas. Now, I also die cut this tree and did exactly the same thing, just added the glitter to the top of that. That was pattern paper. It's hard to see, but there you see how I've put that together into a card. It is quite pretty to see that, and you do see a bit of the pattern through. And here are the poncettas I've put together with that woven paper base. Um, just the, the colors seem to go together, so I have two Christmas cards done. <laughs> Okay, and so finally, if all else fails and you still have pattern paper, I put them into envelopes. So I have made templates. These are my slimline envelopes and they are pretty ugly on the inside. They just were office type envelopes. So I've created my own template. Um, I don't go all the way to the bottom. Nobody sees inside, so I just cut it short but I make a mark where the fold line is and then I just cut the tops at an angle. And then to put them in, I just slide them in so they line up with the fold line on the envelope flap. And I put a little bead of glue and then fold the top flap down over top. And that seems to work. I don't think you need to glue the bottom in or anything, but that will hold inside the envelope and you can always coordinate with whatever card you're making and just make it an extra special little envelope for, for your cards. So that was the slimline envelope and I do the same thing with my regular A2 cards. I use these, um, I think it's six and a half by four and three quarter inches and here I've just got the template made and then I just store those with my envelope so I know what I, what I need to cut. And I do it exactly the same way. So a little bit of glue now and fold the top flap down and there you have it. Pretty simple and a great way to use up little scraps of, of leftover patterned paper. So there you have it guys. There is a whole number of different ways to get out that patterned paper and put it to good use. I kind of think that it looks better on cards than it does on my shelf. So <laughs> I'm hoping I've given you guys a little bit of inspiration and I hope that you'll try some of these uh, in the near future with your pattern paper. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you guys are having a great day.